guys, welcome back to Fix It Fingers. This is my Craig Square Cut, and I think it's the very first blue tool from Craig that I ever bought about two years ago, and it's been very well loved. Recently, Craig brought out this, the portable cross cut, I believe it's called. Comes in a box that looks like that, and other than the tool, the only thing in there is the instructions, which nobody reads, and you don't have to anyway, because it's literally two pages. We'll go into the setup of this later, because what I'm here to do today is to answer the question of if you already own a square cut, do you need the new cross cut? No? That's the short one. Do you want it? Eh, probably. Let's take a closer look. Okay, these are both very simple tools. The old square cut, you probably will have a hard time tracking down these days. There are a few kicking around, but it has been superseded by the new portable cross cut. Straight away, you can see that there's a bit more thought and a bit more going on here. However, they are effectively incredibly simple devices. What they're designed for is butting up to a straight piece of timber and making yourself a cut with your handy circular saw. Who are they made for? Well, people like me when I was starting out who have no bench tools and you are relying on your portable hand tools like a circular saw or even a jigsaw, these tools will come in very handy for you. Or if you have got your larger tools, your table saw, your miter saw, but you need to break down big pieces to fit more safely onto those stationary machines. Straight away, if you already own the old square cut, there's one major thing that's gonna put you off wanting the new portable cross cut, and that is the cut capacity. This piece of timber here, a bit of plywood, is 25 centimeters, so about 10 inches long. And as we can see, the square cut can go up to about 12 inches, 300 millimeters, with absolute ease, and a little bit further, as long as you are safe. Whereas the new portable cross cut, it maxes out at about eight inches, or just shy of 200 millimeters. So you're losing a little bit of the cut depth with this new design. Honestly, I'm not terribly sure why they didn't just include this triangle here, much like they have there, to give you that bit of extra cut. I'm sure there was a reason for it. It could just be a cost or packaging things, but to me, that is just a little bit small, as it's not unusual for me to want to cut down something this size. Obviously, for your two by fours or the regular smaller stuff, it's gonna have no problems at all. But that is where the disadvantages end. The square cut butts up in one direction and one direction only. It can only do 90 degree cuts. The big party trick of the portable cross cut is we can turn it around and suddenly we're cutting at 45s. And that is a massive improvement over the old design and puts it up there with you know a traditional speed square just bigger the real kicker though are these nifty things these are cut guides and we're going to show you how to very very quickly calibrate those now all right i got my stand two by four a bed slat let's demonstrate how to set this up and how it works so you don't need a lot of saw showing here. Just make sure that you've only got a nice shallow cut set. That'll do. Now the important thing during your setup is that this thing doesn't move. It comes out of the box. You can undo those. This will make them slideable. And make sure they are tucked all the way in for beginning. Pick a spot on your 2x4, position the jig and get a good grip on it. Safety gear on. One of the other new features of the portable cross cut are these little shelves to help you start and rest the saw on and they are quite nice. Doesn't matter where you're doing this one, as long as you hold it still, you'll be good. That is literally enough. Great, so now you can push out your guide and bring it into line with where you saw made the cut, carefully as you can. Give this a gentle tighten and retract. Now, when you take this away, if that's your pencil mark, every time you wanna make a cut, push that out, position the guide, let go, and it will disappear back in and you know that you are gonna be cutting on your line. There 
There you go, we can see that we were perfectly lined up with the first one. Very, very nice. Compare that to the old one, whereas on the square cut, it had this stationary thing. And what you did was you set it up the first time, but even so, over time, just with some little deflections of user error, you do nick and cut that away. You get bits of blue plastic flying up and it gets progressively shorter and you can only extend it so much. We can then flip the jig over and we can do the exact same calibration with the 45 degree one. Don't move it. I swear I hadn't set this up already. But that to me looks pretty good. Give it a test. And we're cutting down the exact same line again. Okay, so a quick demo. You can use this, of course, to mark your lines first and then using those nice retractable guides. Make your cuts quickly and efficiently. What also helps is setting your saw to the correct depth. So let's try that. And then we'll be able to slice through our two by four in one pass instead of three. Just goes to show you, no matter how idiot proof Craig make their tools, I can always prove myself the bigger idiot. Flipping it over to 45s, and it should be mentioned that that grip max is on both sides and the stops work on both sides. So once you've set it up for your saw, you can cut left or right handed 45s, and you can of course cut on either side of the saw if you are a left handed operator. Not only is this thing quick, but we'll grab ourselves a square, and that's just bang on 90. Beautiful. And we'll grab the combo square and we'll check those 45s and they too look pretty sweet. The other small improvement I have found is with this sort of grip area here. Compared to my old dots, which are, you can see here already pulling and wearing away. Now granted, it has had quite a bit of use, but still they would be failing me sometime soon. I think the new rubber grip max on there is going to be awesome. There are no bells and whistles for this. It's a very simple tool. If you have a speed square or you have the square cut, you may not really need this thing, but I would like to thank Craig Australia for sending it out to me and it will be replacing my old tool. I hope that gave you a bit of insight as to whether it'll be worth it for you. Thanks a lot, I'll catch you on the next one.